I love gaming. If I didn't, I wouldn't have made this YouTube channel. But it feels like in recent years that those AAA games that we usually rely on and can't wait to play, they usually end up disappointing. I'm your daddy. Indie studios are much smaller with a much smaller budget, but this means that they have the creative freedom to try new things and put all the love into their game. That is why we need to run through these 20 or 21 indie games that you may want to play on your PS5 in 2024. Some of these are already out and some are yet to come. But let's forget all about that Suicide Squad game <laughs> because that wasn't canon and let's move on. Okay, so I know our game hasn't done too well, <laughs> but we have season one coming soon and we want you what? to come back and play. You shit. must be joking. Why the hell do you think I would do that? You disrespected Batman for what? <laughs> for Sweet Baby. I didn't know. I didn't even want to hire Sweet Baby. That wasn't me. That was the higher ups. Don't lie. Just please, I'm losing it. <laughs> if you're losing it, you should see how many people are actually playing it on Steam now. <laughs> Damn sweet baby! He needs some milk! Sweet baby! So in number 21, we have... We have... <laughs> something wrong with my damn keyboard! Shout out to Akko for sending me this incredible keyboard. Oh my gosh, talk about trying to become a full-time YouTuber. This keyboard is one of the most durable keyboards using magnetic axis technology, which means it's much more durable, so it's gonna freaking last. There are so many customization options with different lights, keyboard layouts for wherever you are in the world, and it was so easy to set up. It comes in this amazing box with this little thing here, helps you take off the keys, which was so easy to do. It comes with all the other keys to change depending on which country you are in, and you can mix and match with these other keys as well. I'm not that technical, but it was so easy to set up. All I did was take off the caps lock key and move the switch into the middle, which is the USB-C connection. Then I pressed the key next to my shift key and it connected. I updated it with the software I downloaded from the website. Then you can customize your keyboard from layouts to even with the lights. And you can also tell it's premium because it is so damn heavy. So if you want to support the channel and get yourself a premium keyboard, if you use code NEUTRO10, you will get 10% your entire order. It also helps me out. It's Neutro 10 for 10% off. There's also three options of connectivity. So you can have it wired, which is in the middle. You can also have it for Mac. So push the switch up all the way up. That will then connect wirelessly to your Mac. It also comes with this little dongle that you just have to plug into your computer. And if you've got Windows, then you just push the switch all the way down. And now that I've got no more glitches, <laughs> now we can get on with the video. <laughs> In number 21, we have House Flippers 2. And I don't really know a game that focuses on renovating and building a house. It looks it looks incredible. Well, apart from the first one. The thought of taking a banged up house that needs cleaning, painting, guttering, then turning it into a masterpiece just sounds so enticing. From knocking down walls, cleaning windows, and there's even going to be a story mode to this game where you can help out the residents of a town called Hinako. But if you're not too bothered about that, there is a sandbox mode where you can just create houses of your dreams. Feels like I'm nowhere near buying a house, so maybe this will be the next next best thing and you can even play chess in this game in number 20 we have cult of the lamb and the art style of this game looks so beautiful and with this roguelite you get resurrected after you get killed and your goal is to kill all of the evil entities that put you there there's a lot to do in this game as you will look to recruit followers on your epic journey so this means you will have a base that you can build supplies and resources you will find throughout the game and you will use this to upgrade your home and your weapons you will be able to get your followers to work together resources for you and as you get more followers you will see the progression with your home base there are a lot of customization options as well as changing the color of your base appearance of your followers and you can decorate how you like your followers will eventually get old so you could sacrifice them Damn. the runs are much shorter than something like Hades but there are also side quests to be completed for your followers and with each run you get terror cards and something that will help with your run that will increase your attack power now in number 19 I know this is an old game what remains of Eden Edith Finch was one of my favorite games. I did play it on my Switch. This was quite an emotional story adventure game where you explore your family's house to uncover what happened to them. This is such a beautiful game as you explore this extremely detailed house and it's so moving because you find out what happened to your family members.
members in their last moments. You record things in your journal or book and it's the way they tell the story about their death which is truly unique because you end up living it out and playing it out as that person. It just hits you hard when you find out what happened. It's a very short game so it's definitely worth a try. In number 18 if you love a game about space then you're gonna love Outer Wilds. Outer Wilds is an open world mystery about a solar system trapped in an endless time loop. Now you are a new recruit in the Outer Wilds ventures and your job is to search answers and explore these five planets as there was an ancient race that once lived in your solar system. Their technology is spread out over these five planets and you will need to uncode what you find and what is so cool about this game is that there is no indication or marker to tell you where to go. It's not like a Ubisoft game where you're just going to be pointed yep just go here and then here. You have to kind of figure it out for yourself. Once you find one clue and then the next clue then it'll kind of push you to move forward. It seems that this can be quite confusing but you're just going to have to use your brain. This still looks like a better game than Starfield. Damn! I'm sorry. In number 17, what I love about some of these indie titles is the vibrant colors and art style. And that is no different with Usant. Usant? I think I got that right. It's French. Usant is an action puzzle climbing game and your goal is to get to the top of the tower. In this world, there was a lot of water and now that the tides are out, this has forced the civilians to move on. And as you explore, you will find journals left by these people when you kind of piece together what happened. This is such a peaceful game and what's incredible about this game, as you can see, the UI is simply, there's nothing there. <laughs> it's not like Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> And it may seem simple, but you need to master the way you climb, focus on timing of your climbs and manage your stamina. There are new features and mechanics that open up as you go along in the game and you will need to use the environment such as the wind in order to make these climbs. It's not a hard game, but it's something you can just relax to. And when you do make that climb, you're just looking down on the world and thinking, wow, how the hell did I do that? Now at number 16, this is a game that you may know because it's got incredible reviews, even though it's quite an older game and that's Disco Elysium The Final Cut. Disco Elysium is an RPG with some of the most unique storytelling and detective work there is. A body has been discovered and your goal is to figure out what is going on. But you wake up and forget your name and who you are. And how this becomes so unique to the player is that you will choose what sort of detective you want to be at the start of the game through these archetypes. Thinker, sensitive, physical or create your own. If you're intelligent you'll be able to work out where you are instantly. As an example, I will probably go for more physical because you know. If you create your own, there are so many options for you to choose how you want to be. From how the public perceive you, you can kind of intimidate them and focus more on your physicality. In order to intimidate your suspects, there is so much choice. And what is cool is that all the choices you make will have outcomes and send you down a certain path. It's in the form of a dice roll, which you may be familiar with, but even with the odds may not be with you, you can risk it anyway and you still might succeed. Number 15, we have Takia a beautiful 3D open world game. And the guys that actually published it were actually kind enough to send me a physical copy before they actually released it. So I'm gonna cherish that game. You play as Takia and your father is abducted on your birthday and your goal is to save him. What makes it a beautiful game is the massive open world. You can soul jump into many animals in order to traverse the world and see in different ways, which spices it up a bit. Visually, it's just stunning. The sunset, the colors. And as I've said in a previous video, the singing and the voice acting is all in its native language. Language. There are puzzles, there are mini games, and yeah, it might feel a bit bloated at times and a bit repetitive, but there's no doubt that there's a lot of love that's gone into this game. Number 14, Rogue Legacy 2 is a follow up from the 2013 title, and there's been a lot of improvements since then. If you love the Metroidvania style game, this game is for you. A simple story as you play as a knight, and your goal is to beat enemies and collect treasures. But my gosh, this looks freaking hard. Timings of some of these obstacles have to be perfect. The Depending on what class you pick, you will get different weapons such as the Valkyrie. She has quite a long weapon which can be used to deflect small projectiles. I like the Barbarian who has an axe which is a lot slower but can spin when used in the air. There are 15 classes to choose from which gives you a hell of a lot of choice. What is cool is that you will be assigned a random trait and that can either be a curse or a blessing. So you might suffer from panic attacks and then all of a sudden the screen is reduced making it harder to see what's coming at you. When you die, your character dies but your next playthrough will
will be the descendant of that player, still utilizing the resources that you gathered. You will then be able to choose from three randomized characters. And there are six unique worlds to explore, three more from the first one. You'll also find blueprints throughout the world for new gear, relics for buffs to improve your stats, weapons, spells, and more. Number 13, Ultros dropped on the 13th of Feb, another Metroidvania game, and you wake up stranded, crashing your ship on the Sark of Fargus. A cosmic uterus. What did you say? I said move. I, I said the uh, Kepasa? Holding an ancient demonic being known as Ultros. Do you find out you are stuck in some kind of loop? I have to say, the gameplay that is shown, it looks like the developers were taking mushrooms whilst making this game. Did they make this in Amsterdam? You will have your standard attack and a charged attack, as some enemies will have protective shields. And what is unique about this game is when you defeat enemies, they will drop body parts for you to feed on, which will result in experience points. But you can't just butt and mash and try and beat these big bosses because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again it will ruin the quality of the meat you have to make sure you vary up your gameplay so you don't ruin that the only problem with the game is with each run you will drop your weapons and perks that may be a bit frustrating as you will need to travel all across the map again to find those weapons and abilities so i'm not sure about you know you're dying and you lose your abilities and your weapons it just seems a bit out of order i could see myself getting pissed off number 12 humanity came out a while back but what a very weird interesting puzzle game as you control a glowing shiba your goal is to command a giant marching horde of people to follow making them turn jump float swim climb in order to reach their goal the story doesn't make any sense but that is why it's so different and weirdly unique it's all about trial and error seeing the mistakes you make is what's all about and then eventually it may start all coming together and i can imagine this could be very satisfying i feel like you have to have a certain brain and certain creative Activity in your mind to complete this game. There is also VR support, which makes sense. In number 11, Eternites has got a lot of good feedback. This game is described as a dating action game as you will need to make the most out of life during an apocalypse. You fill out a dating profile at the start of the game which is quite funny and takes place in South Korea. The apocalypse happens from this device called the Eternite Supplement that is supposed to prolong life but actually turns people into monsters. You meet new characters early on and there is a lot of dialogue options that will increase certain stats. The action looks quick, responsive and easy to get to grips with. As you explore you will be rewarded with black essence and this will result in improved in strength and as you increase the relationships you have you will then have access to new attacks and abilities and the combat looks really good <laughs> In number 10, Among Us came out a long time ago, but this is still one of the best indie games out there. It's so easy to get to grips with eight crew members and you will take part in mini activities and there will be two imposters that are secretly murdering crew members. The mini games look fun and there's a lot of variety and you're just on edge whilst completing these tasks because it takes up the screen. You're like, am I going to get killed? It can really put you on edge if you're not the imposter. But if you are the imposter, you have to be careful not to get caught. There will be in-game chat and it's about trying to frame other players and decide to try and deflect the blame onto someone else. You can change aspects of the game to make it in favor of the imposter or other players. In number nine, we have Hollow Knight Silkson. And I have mentioned this game in a previous video, but there is no telling when this game is coming out. There's been a lot of delays and a lot of quietness from the developers. But the good thing about being an indie developer is that they will not rush this game. I like AAA games. <laughs> I never played the first game, but with this one, you will switch playing from the night by playing as the Hornet. You find yourself kidnapped and spirited away in a kingdom called Farloom. Your job is to find your way up to the top and find out the truth about your kidnapping. It's been described to have over 150 brand new enemies, new bosses, and you will now have the ability to craft weapons, tools, traps, and materials you gather from enemies. So it is going to be a much bigger game than the first one. Now, number eight. Teardown is one of the most fun indie games there is. It dropped on the PS Plus, I believe, and this is such a fun game. Your business goes to shit and you have to start taking on questionable jobs to make some money. But the fun in this game is where you can just crash and demolish buildings in different ways. You have quite a few tools, shotguns, blow torches, sledgehammers to take down these houses and buildings. You can drive vehicles to help with this. You might need to steal a vehicle from a certain order and destroy it. And it's just so jokes. And I remember just making 
teach you how to destroy this building it's quite hard because you have to find materials i'm like why is that not breaking it's just it's just carnage there will be heists there's still certain tech and they can be timed as well and it just increases the amount of fun with this game and there are also different ways to complete these tasks so this is one to really try out it's a lot of fun and number seven we have stray still one of the most surprising games when this came out because who would have thought playing as a cat would be so much fun but they nailed it and there's a much deeper story to this game than you think after losing your family just exploring this cyberpunk world as a cat i didn't think it would be so much fun you will need to work with these robots in order to progress through the levels explore many different buildings in order to complete certain objectives you have to use the environments like dropping paint bucket in a turbine machine in order to progress and it's more so the environments and the graphics that was just so eye-catching it was so enjoyable to explore your goal is to find your family but also understand why is this city enclosed and what happened to the humans here that used to live here and there are even enemies that you will have to try and escape when you play it you wish it was actually a lot longer now in number six we have a game that is created by four damn people. When our game was made by over 4,000 employees with, with different genders and, and, and different ethnicities and, and, and colors and names and shoe sizes. Yeah, this game is still better, yet it was made by four people. Never mind. We played this game on stream and this was one of the most impressive games, especially for an indie developer. Four damn people. This was so much fun. Just pure action. You escape a prison and your goal is to fight your way through enemies and paranormal ones. It feels like I'm playing Counter-Strike back in the day. Now it isn't a deep story, but it's just pure fun. It's just so impressive. It's just more impressive than anything. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's just a lot of shooting. Number five, we have one of the best roguelike action games with Hades. Oh my gosh, what a game this this was now this was a game that when i first saw it, i was like yeah i don't think this is for me but when you try it out it becomes so addictive you play as zagoras son of hades your goal is to get through the whole game without dying because when you die it all resets again and this is the fun part about hades you will die and you will die and you will die but each time you do die you will then be able to upgrade your weapons you will get new abilities and you will get help from the gods of olympus as well so you will get new abilities from them and with each run you can try something new but you will also improve so you will get further and further each time and there are different weapons that you can choose from for him to use so there's a lot of variety there are stories and dialogue options to unlock in the underworld lots of cosmetics to unlock and that's what i loved about the game is was changing the cosmetics of the living area and stuff like that the bosses are super hard and there's a lot of variety my gosh and with hades 2 coming very soon i do believe it's coming now in 2025 i do believe it was supposed to come out last year like a couple years delay but Hades is definitely worth a play. Number four, another gem that needs to be played is Sea of Stars. And I don't usually like turn-based, but this is a bit different. It tells the story of two children who can combine the powers of the sun and moon to perform eclipse magic. And this is the only force that is capable of fending the monstrous creating of the evil alchemist. Now you start off as a child and you and your sister are best friends with this guy, Gal. And this was quite moving because at the start, you then leave to go for training and you go and train for quite a few years and you don't see him again. Now the combat is a lot of fun because even though it's turn-based there are certain button sequences that you need to do to perform in order to kind of reduce the amount of damage taken to you so when an attack comes in you can reduce the damage taken to you if you press the button at the right time some abilities are really cool like valerie being able to parry attacks back and forth so it makes the turn base so much more alive instead of just pressing one button this just feels like i'm playing my old game boy color but also modernizes it in a way as well in number three one of my favorite indie games with kina bridge of spirits if you haven't played this game seriously you need to play it and i really do hope that they bring out a sequel they they better do i hope they made money from this game the art style is simply amazing the environments the lighting her goal is to help spirits move on and find out what is causing the corruption the combat is very satisfying and as you progress you will unlock new abilities a bow and arrow and you will get a lot stronger the enemies and the bosses are super difficult it feels like a souls game at times these big bosses because you have to work out their movements and their patterns and make sure you do learn that because if you don't then you're dead I, I died a hell of a lot i thought i could play this on hard you can slow down time whilst using your bow and arrow and what i found most difficult was the damn puzzles i was sitting there like what am i doing i'm not going on youtube i'm not i'm going on youtube but finding ways to maneuver around is what's fun and you will get this bomb power up that can then activate certain platforms that will move into place and you'll have a certain amount of time to then maneuver across the map <laughs> the amount of times i looked on youtube was crazy
<laughs> well, maybe you could check out Old Joker coming soon. <laughs> Season one? <laughs> no! Get out! Sifu, who's been out quite a long time, but wow, this is a must, must play. I had so much fun completing this game. This is the best Kung Fu action game out there. It starts with so much action as your master is killed at the start. Fast forward, your goal is to get revenge. The fighting is so damn smooth, and when you have enemies coming at you, honestly, you feel like a badass. You can stun enemies, use your environments. It can be so damn hard as it can be so unforgiving, especially the big bosses. This is all about learning how to block and parry effectively. Your enemies will use weapons against you and as you die, what is so unique is that you will get older but wiser each time you die. You have to make sure you minimize the amount you die and once you reach age 70, you will then be done and you will have to restart. My, still to this day, my favorite level was the nightclub scene. Now at number one, we have Pacific Drive. It is still on my list because I'm waiting for that physical release. Yes, it's already out digital, but forget that. We're not doing that. Have you heard the news of all that digital mess up with Sony? You have to escape this incredible detailed weird world of the Olympic exclusion zone. And like I said, you will have to find a way to escape, but at the same time, repair and upgrade your car to withstand these abnormal activities. You can customize your car and upgrade it, fix it because it's gonna get damaged. There's a lot more than you think in this game like making sure you have enough petrol battery life managing your tire wear you will need certain resources to upgrade these so you have to make sure you take note whilst in the world it's the environments that scare me because your car can actually play up in the damn world it could literally shut off the damn bonnet can come up and obscure your vision <sighs> stress it's like being in the car with L's. Yeah, this was like such a fun game and being an indie developer, they deserve my money, especially this game. So you're going to get it. You, you, you're not AAA. <laughs> Forget AAA. What do you think about the indie games I've mentioned? I'm sure there are ones that I've missed out and that's why you guys are here. So drop your thoughts in the comments and let me know. Well, let's take a look at the comment of the day of my previous video. I got sent this device and is it better than the PS Portal? Shout out to North Chandelier. Sorry if I got your name wrong. Hey, good video, brother. I consulted with my wife and she says, considering I've been so out of luck in getting my hands on a portal with all the stock out issues, I might as well give an alternative a try out. Cheers for bringing this one to light. The Absolute Console is a very cool device device very impressive and it can do much more than the ps4 if you're someone like me who just plays playstation i love my portal i feel like it's the most premium way to play your playstation 5 games but that's not to say the absolute is not worth it you might think i just want to play my games around the house then this is perfect because you can play so many games on that <laughs> you could play as harley quinn huh? <laughs> for fan favorite <laughs> Oh, I'm going to lose my job. You're done. You've lost your job. You, you, mate, forget it. Drop it. <laughs> I'm going to have to apply for Ubisoft.